Hi everyone, it's Daniel from Esri. In this video, we'll be going through the Label Your Map tutorial for ArcGIS Pro. Map labels help us identify important features on a map and focus the user's attention on relevant areas of interest. In this tutorial, we'll label our map, adjust visibility ranges, and set label placement settings. You can follow the step-by-step -step instructions for this tutorial using the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Start ArcGIS Pro and sign in if you need to. Open another project with ArcGIS Online and type in Label Your Map Tutorial. Click OK. The project opens with a light gray base map centered on Wellington, New Zealand. This map can be used as an emergency planning resource for the city. It includes layers for civil defense centers, building footprints, and flood risk. In particular, we're interested in labeling historic buildings within the flood zone. Remove the light gray reference layer from the contents pane. We don't want these labels to interfere with labels from the map layers we're going to turn on. Labels for a layer are based on values in the layers attribute table. Open the suburb boundaries attribute table. We'll use the suburb column to label our map. Right click the suburb boundaries layer and click label. Expand the test symbol style gallery and click on the landform physical region style. Then change the label placement to land parcel. Notice how some of the labels disappear. The land parcel placement suppresses labels that don't fit completely within their feature. As you zoom in, more features are labeled. As you pan, the label changes position to stay in view. In this tutorial, we chose certain label textiles and placements, but you can choose your own based on your preferences. Labels may be more or less helpful depending on the scale. For example, as you zoom into a map, labels for regional features grow less important and labels for local features become more important. By choosing the right map scale to display your labels, you help the map reader focus on the most important features of your map. We'll set the visibility range for the suburb boundaries labels to 7000, so they don't display at very large map scales. Go to the tiara bookmark and zoom into the map layer. You'll notice that the labels disappear when you zoom in past 7000. Another thing we can do with labels is symbolize areas of interest. In this case, we want to label historic buildings within the flood risk zone. To do this, we'll build an SQL query. Go to the Historic Buildings 1 bookmark, select the Building Footprints layer, and click Label. Open the Attribute table and sort the historic field name. Notice how most of the historic buildings have proper names. However, others are simply called Building, House, or Warehouse. Go to the Labeling Properties and start an SQL query. You can use queries to label specific features of interest. In this case, We'll use the query to label only the historic buildings. Click New Expression and set the following condition. Now, only the historic buildings are labeled. By default, all historic buildings are labeled even if the labels are placed outside the feature they belong to. Next, we'll change the label properties and placement settings to make the labels easier to see and have them fit within the buildings. In the Label class, change the placement to Straight in Polygon. Then, uncheck the May Place Label Outside Polygon Boundary checkbox. Now, building labels are no longer placed completely outside of their features. However, labels are allowed to extend beyond the boundary of a feature. Change the symbol font size to 8 and font color to Arctic White. The white labels are easier to read and the smaller font size means that more labels fit completely inside the buildings. Pan around the neighborhood. Notice how some buildings have long names and don't fit well within their features. We'll place some constraints on how far labels allowed to extend beyond the boundary of its feature. Click the Fitting Strategy tab. Expand Overrun and change the maximum to 5 points. Expand Reduce Size and check the Reduce Font Size checkbox. You can also modify settings for font size reduction and width compression. Go to Historic Buildings 2 bookmark. Notice how some historic buildings aren't labeled. This is because they don't fit the constraints that we assigned. However, you can still view the unplaced labels if you need to. Change the map scale and remove the unplaced labels. We'll set another visibility range to make sure all the labels turn off when we zoom out. To do this, type 2500 next to out beyond. The last thing we'll do is label civil defense centers. These centers are used as emergency shelters in the event of a flood. Go to the TRO bookmark and turn on the Civil Defense Centers layer. The labels for the centers are based on the site name attribute. Right-click the layer and select Label. 
Change the text symbol style. You can also change the placement of the labels. Notice how the labeling properties for the point layer are different than the previous polygon layer. For example, you can move labels from the best position to right beneath the feature. In this tutorial, we learned how to label a map in ArcGIS Pro. We used map labels to point out map features such as historic buildings. We also changed the label size, color, and positioning to help map readers focus their attention on the true purpose of the map. You can learn more about map labels in the ArcGIS Pro documentation.